ourselves. I would like to think that in the past, Oracle technology has been meeting very real needs. It's been meeting requirements for ever-growing amounts of data. It's meeting, meeting very real requirements for performance, performance, as more and more people require access to the information in your organization. 11G, I suggest to you, is based entirely on the very real needs of you, our customers, our partners, and indeed all of our users. We spent more time generating 11G than we have in our previous versions of the database. Our beta test was larger than ever. 250 customers, 150 partners took part in the beta testing for 11G over the period of 14 months. We used, uh, I'm not nervous, if that's shaking, I'm not nervous, I'm just an alcoholic. We used uh, our friends in the innovation field. For example, CERN, the Nuclear Physics Laboratory uh, in Switzerland and France, work a lot with us. They have a phrase, you make it, we'll break it. And they do. And we work with them in the early phases to ensure that each successive version of our platform takes into account their requirements. Today, CERN generates literally petabytes of information every time two electrons collide in their collider. That data is then analyzed by literally thousands of scientists. But what sounds like science fiction today is just around the corner for the mainstream tomorrow. So what I'm going to do this morning is begin with a description of 11G. I'm going to try and open up a little bit of what's inside. Now many of my colleagues in the breakout sessions later today and this afternoon will go into much greater depth. But here I'd like to open the kimono, as the Americans would say, lift the hood, or as a Scotsman would say, we're going to look up the kilt of what's inside 11G database. There are really four areas of development which are now available, and indeed I should mention, available in Linux um, already for download. The four areas of development are to provide better insight into our business through data types, managing growth, a higher quality of service, of course, and trying to help in the pressure of managing change. I'd like to say a few words about each of these four after I've had my photograph taken again. Thank you. Better business insight, matter of three every two years. So whether you're a small organization or a big one, every two years the amount of data you have will probably triple. How can we effectively manage that? Well with 11G we've introduced Partitioning has been there for some time. We've introduced with 11G and made it easier to drop the data into chunks, partitions, and to manage these partitions separately. It's the only way. It's the only way of effectively managing growing at large quantities of data is to partition it into blocks, groups, chunks, whatever word you wish to use. With 11G we've introduced a partitioning advisor. This is a wizard which will allow you or your developers or your staff, depending on your role, to more much manage how the data is divided into different with the data warehouse to create something called a materialized view. Rather than have long questions which take a long time to answer of a data warehouse, what organizations frequently do is create, pre-populate a view that allows a great improvement in performance. Like all things in life, there's an 80-20 rule. 80% of the queries can be dealt with 20% of the information. So we materialize views. For those of you who have done this, you'll know that often there are lots and lots of materialized views created. People say, my I'm asking something for the data warehouse. I want to do analysis of our past 
performance, could I please have a materialized view because I'm going to be using this a lot. As a result, resources start getting used up, performance starts to suffer. With 11G, we've allowed the materialized views to be managed within what's called an OLAP cube. And for those of you who are more technical, you'll understand immediately what I'm saying here. For a long time, we've had a, an analytical cube within the database. We're using that cube now to manage the materialized views. This means less use of resource, very high performance. For those who are less technical, what we've done essentially is allow you to put a turbocharger, uh, an automatic speed up on the front of a data warehouse. This will help you manage the speed at which people can access the common requirements in a data warehouse. And finally, very briefly, the pressure to manage change. We talk a lot about changing political environments, changing strategies, changing business applications, changing business processes. But that also has a deep implication on the underlying infrastructure. Is the infrastructure we have today good enough to help us with all these changes? Well, I hope so. Because changing infrastructure is frightening. If you're moving the foundations that everything is built on, it's easy to have the top of the building begin to shake. Nobody here likes to change infrastructure, don't like migrations, don't like upgrades, upgrades don't like changing things in the infrastructure if I can avoid it. But I'm afraid we have to. To get the level of security that we require, the level of performance that we require, the level of flexibility that we require, we have to be prepared as infrequently as possible as the drive